Philly Frank. So yeah, we live in South Philly right now, live from Do For Self Studio. Shout out to Tiffy Bay, the whole fam and all that. Right. Know what I mean? But you originally from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. BK, Brownsville section, East New York and all that. Mm -hmm. So now I mean, just, you know what I mean? For the people that's not too familiar with you, that's tuned in, we're going to give them a brief rundown of your background and your story and all that so you can get a little bit more familiar with you. So tell the people a little bit of what it was like growing up in, in, in your section where you come from. See me? I tell niggas, man, I, I ain't never played sports and shit. Like, I know how to fix cars. I ain't gonna make it seem like I was just no fucking dumbass little stupid little nigga. Like, I know how to fix cars and shit. My pop showed me how to uh, put my hands to useful, useful things and shit. But um, my cousins and them niggas is like, they the elders in this shit that, I, that we claim in do straight. So it's like, that shit looked cool to a nigga. So it's like, I took that shit more serious than they did. And I just ran with it. So me coming up where I came up, I didn't come up like everybody else could say. Like everybody would be like, oh, I'm from East New York, I'm from Brownsville. Y'all niggas didn't go through what I went through. Nigga, I had this, nigga, I paved the way. I'm the reason half these niggas can even throw up crit, nigga, in East New York, nigga. And you could ask any big blood nigga that about these little skinny Loki all that. Niggas wasn't claiming my set over there. You know what I'm saying? So my, me coming up in my sections, not even in the section, because I have sections, it wasn't easy. You know what I'm saying? Or, and I'm a little skinny nigga, so like I always tell niggas I always had to go through more than the average nigga. Like, niggas see me and think like it's gonna be easy. You know what I'm saying? So I always had to prove myself because I ain't no bitch. Or, or got you. All right, tell people a little bit about your household, what it was like growing up, your family life and stuff like that. My mom's from Trinidad, my pops from St. Thomas, so you know like, like coming up and like your parents from the islands and shit. Like the discipline be different, like the food is different. Like you don't eat like regular breakfast, like a bacon, egg, and cheese in the morning and shit every time. Like you might as well eat like a porridge or a saltfish or a bake or one, two, a lorry on this, you know what I'm saying? Some right. shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Some callaloo and this or something. It ain't gonna be no, 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 no saltfish, I mean, no uh, egg and cheese and shit like that. Okay. Some shit was different. Even the hygiene shit, like yo. I be telling motherfuckers, like, even with this corona shit going on right now, like, everybody be like, yo, wash your hands, duh, motherfucker. I'm from Trinidad, nigga, my mother make me wash my hands, nigga, every time we touch something, hello. You know what I'm saying? My pops fix cars. Wash your hands after you done touching something, hello. So it's like, we be saying this shit now, it's like, y'all gotta see people dying from a virus, the motherfucking, be sanitary, motherfucking, wash your hands and get in the shower and wash your face and shit. That's, that says a lot about America. You know what I'm saying? Real shit, I'm not from here. Real talk, word. Good thing that you even asked me about like being growing up in households and shit like that. Like, certain shit be different cause I'm crip, like, word. Word, word. All right, so speaking of that, like you speak, uh, you gave them a little bit about how you actually got into the crip and stuff. You saying older, other people do it, your older family members, and you kind of gravitated towards it. So explain for people, because you know in Philly, like we don't necessarily gang bang. It's like people like yeah. do like the blocks. I'm from this block, they from that block. If we into it, then we into it. So explain for people that don't know, that's not familiar with gang culture, how it worked, bands, though you, you crip, you, you in the crip set, like how it worked with the other gangs, how y'all politic, how y'all move, and, and New York with that. Hi, I'm G Stone. We don't like nobody. That's first off. We don't even like each other. That's second off. Third off is like, um, you want to get put on the set. Um, oh yeah, this is a message I'm gonna say to a call. You little fucking crip niggas that's gonna say, oh, you can't say that nigga. I'm certified. I'm sanctioned, nigga. I can talk on this shit if I want to. You know what I'm saying? Facts, nigga. On crip. Feel me? So it's like, um. Yeah, like you want to get put on the set, you gotta prove yourself. Like I, nowadays, it's different. I don't know. Like niggas wake up and post a picture with blue flags and mad niggas like it, and it's like, oh, he's crip now. Feel me? Like back in the days, niggas was g checking you. Like homeboys was running down on you, and you was getting beat the fuck up by grown men. Feel me? You you 
12, 13 years old, you wasn't getting punched in the face by a nigga your age, bro. Big homeboys running down on you, niggas 30 years old, nigga. Actually, you was up trying to take your flight, man. This shit is a fairy tale now, cuz. You know what I'm saying? But niggas get put on the set differently now, but when I was coming up, you had to prove yourself. You had to do a few things that, that I wouldn't really say of, but you could fight and shit like that the normal ways that niggas know of. Or you could do other things, you feel me? So, it's like, nowadays, people using this shit to make money now because people see, like, like, looking like you tough make you money. You know what I'm saying? You look like you tough and look like you've been through something. They need, they need a blogger to start doing research on all rappers, like a fucking... Like a real investigator, start pulling everybody car. That nigga make money, bro. I'm telling you, whoever do it, chop me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, they need to have a blogger that just do like, like real research on every rapper, like criminal history, all that. You talk about some drugs, let me see how many times you got caught with some dope, nigga. Everything. You shot niggas, let me see how many guns you got caught with. You know what I'm saying? Because otherwise than that, this shit will continue to just be a fucking circus, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then when niggas like me speak up on it, on you cloud chasing, you hating this that person. All right, all right. All right, so the, another question I'm going to ask on that as far as like Benzo, you spoke on the rappers and they, how to use it for clout and stuff like that. Yeah. And there's a lot of rappers in New York that's from New York, and I mean, that claim like gangs and stuff. You're talking about even down the, the females, you're talking about Cardi and, and I mean, claiming different. Yeah, shout so, out to Cardi. Yeah, so what percentage of rappers would you say from New York that claim the gangs is really from there for real? How many you think just using I'm it for say clout? It like this, I don't give a fuck. But who feel a way about this that claim my set and this is on the set? The niggas that do, that do the things that I was forced to do ain't hit. Free Ziggy Zah, nigga. All saw Crip, nigga. Vanguard Lifestyle should have get shot. That's a fact. Like, the niggas that did the things that I was forced to do and forced to see, nigga, ain't hit, cuz. A lot of my homies is dead, bro. I got a, a, a right arm with nothing but dead homie names on it, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That ain't even all of them, or that ain't even a third of them, that ain't even, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, word. So it's like, the homies that, that, that really put that real pain in that these niggas be rapping about, they not here to talk about that shit, bro. Niggas is doing 107 years, true words. Niggas doing all types of crazy time and shit like that. Niggas will never see their kids, they never see their mothers that be able to roll a spliff again, a real spliff again in their life. So all you niggas that's out there talking, like not saying everybody is a fraud, because a few niggas did make it out and, and, and was blessed and fortunate to uh, make it through like I did. But not everybody blessed like me. Like I'm blessed, like it's not even about being lit or nothing like that. Like you gotta really be blessed to get through the shit that I've been through. Feel me? Like blessed, like that shit is a high power. I don't give a fuck how much money you got, none of that. Like you gotta really be blessed. Alright. And on that note, you went through a real serious situation, know what I mean? In regards to your life and your, your family, and I mean, as well, as well documented, know what I mean? So I wanted to give people a little bit of that story for us, because that's something that you've been through that, know what I mean, it's definitely a crazy story. So you had a situation where, you know, some people was trying to cause some harm to you, know what I mean? And, 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 and managed to actually cause harm to your child, which led to your child not being here no more. And then you actually went to jail behind that situation. Funeral for a little boy. Tonight, a family says goodbye to a one-year-old shot and killed by a gang member gunning for the child's father. Life cut short in an instant. Why? Why an innocent one-year-old child? And that indeed tonight is the question on everyone's mind. Good evening, everyone. At 11 o'clock. I'm Bill Ritter. And I'm Shade Bitter. And while the men arrested in that little boy's death should be back in New York any minute now. Tonight, there is anger at the two suspects and at the baby's father, who himself has refused to cooperate with detectives. Police have not said why he would have been targeted. But as the investigation has continued, this was a night of grief. Police say the pair were really targeting Antique's father, Anthony Hennis, but they missed the bullet passing through the stroller he was pushing and hitting Antique in the face. So speak a little bit, you know, as much as you want to get the people that part of your story, you know what I mean? Fuck them niggas. And freedom niggas. Facts. Fuck them niggas and freedom niggas. That the gangsters play. It's 
certain things you can't forget. Certain, like my mother always tell me you gotta forgive people or like, like certain things there's no forgiveness. In this lifetime, I might forgive you in the next lifetime. But not this one. So definitely condolences to you on that, I mean. So so just speak a little bit on, you know, you having to go sit down for some time behind that because you didn't want to necessarily, or you did because you didn't cooperate or whatever the case may be. Oh yeah, like, like to say it, to say it, like, People be telling me like, yo, I can't express myself on the internet how I do like. And the reason why I be telling motherfuckers like, fuck you, shut the fuck up and all that other shit is because it's like, it's like, y'all niggas wouldn't, y'all niggas wouldn't even be able to do or no one be able to look yourselves in the mirror if y'all was me. Put it that way, like, real shit, my nigga. Like, like nigga, I ain't never telling on the nigga damn my life, boy. Not even my, and my worst enemy. Niggas done tried to kill me how many times? I ain't never been. NYPD watched all my interviews, man. I dare them niggas to say something, but I told them the niggas, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't tell, I can't tell them the niggas. I mean, niggas did what they did to me. Niggas try to do what they do to me, but like I always tell niggas, I kill a nigga before, or I try to kill a nigga before I put him in jail. That's a fact, you know what I'm saying? I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Like and shit. Right, right, right. So just briefly explain how, uh, how much you want to like being locked up for something like that over your head. Now I mean, like a lot of people be booked for a lot of different things, but ain't too many people been booked for nothing like that. So speak on what that experience was like for you and, and what it was like transitioning back home from that. All right. To get into it, you gonna get it out of me. I'm trying not to speak on this shit. It's like this. It's like. When you go through something like that, like your mind be weak, so it's like, you can't even show emotions cause it's like, you got a name and you got a position and a rank in the gang, so it's like, people look at you and they expect a certain uh, reaction from you. So it's like, you can't be, oh, I just lost my kid cause I can't fight niggas. Oh, I can't go home with a scapel. I can't tuck the scapel on my ass cause I'm sad. I lost, I lost my kid cause. Oh, I want to be with my family right now because I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? It's like that type of shit to have you coming home where your face ain't looking like mine. You know what I'm trying to show you? Like facts. Niggas will take advantage of you. You got a name. So not every nigga that's not sad in life like you and weak in their mind like you and sitting there emotional, devastated like you, yeah, guess what? They're going to take advantage of you being weak at the moment mentally and try to get their name up off of you. And I'm not with that. You know what I'm saying? So I had to do one of two things. Either sit down and be stuck in the maze or snap back into reality and tell myself, like, nigga, I'm low key low, nigga. Let my nuts hang, nigga. And no nigga gonna sit down and violate me, nigga, because I gotta go home to the streets after this, nigga. And my name is what it is in the streets, nigga. That's all I got is my name. I might as well kill myself if I don't got my name, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what you think I'm gonna do? Let niggas bitch me in there because I'm smaller than them to come home and tell niggas, oh, I let a nigga take my pin number because I was weak in the mind because I lost my kid, or I let niggas take my commissary because, or I was braiding niggas' hair because, or I was scared to go to the yard, or I stopped claiming crypt. No, nigga. That's why I be telling all these niggas to respect my shit because none of these niggas would don't, they don't understand the, the, the pieces of it like I'm, I'm explaining it to you. Like, people just think, like, oh, you went through it and life went on. No, motherfucker. Sit down and actually think of it the way that it actually happened. Like if you were a human being and you had to mentally like heal yourself with no counseling, no family, lean on their shoulder, no mommy and daddy saying, hey, it's gonna be okay, nigga. None of that, nigga. I'm tougher than all these things, man. Word, that's a fact, nigga. I'm tougher than all these things. And that's a fact. I don't even say that to try to be like, word, I'm tougher than all these things, bro. Facts. Yeah, that was definitely a crazy situation to go through. So when it's still going through, I mean, I mean, morning and all that. So how long was you locked up behind that? And just give them a brief rundown how it was for you coming home and how you get back situated from that. See, like when I came back home, it's crazy because like I be wishing life wasn't like that sometimes. But it's like when I came home, like my 
my family, them niggas, that my family ain't wealthy and rich, man. I made my family what it is, like. Like, true words, like. Like, I made my family what it is, like. Not my, not my uncles, not my brothers, not my cousins, not nobody. Me, for me, the black sheep of the family that they call me, like. I made people in my neighborhood look at my family the way they gotta look at us, you know, like. I made all my cousins in them look at themselves greater than what it was. Like, I was the one with the cars since we was younger. So that made everybody in my family feel like, oh, I gotta get a car, I gotta learn how to drive, I gotta, you feel me? I'm talking about coming from Brownsville, my nigga. Like, niggas be 30 years old and they ain't driving, cuz. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't know how to drive, cuz. Ain't got no license. Never been behind the wheel in their life. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, coming from there, 13, 14 years old, pulling up, nigga. Candy paint on your cars, nigga. I'm putting $30,000 in my cars in music, nigga. Nigga, and I'm still in junior high school, high school, nigga. The only nigga in junior high school driving to school, nigga. I'm legendary in Brooklyn. That's a fact, nigga. The first nigga with 26 is on a Chevy, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I motivated my family to, to, to be more than what they brought me on earth to be, basically. You know what I'm saying? I was born broke. I ain't broke, nigga. I'm a rich crit. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So... Growing up like that, it ain't, it ain't, it wasn't easy, and it ain't easy. And, and, and my own family ain't support nothing that I did. For me, I, I can say this, and I never said this on one of my interviews. Like, I come from a hard situation. Like, nobody support what I do. For me, like, as far as family, niggas from my hood, like, people only support what I do when I do dumb shit. Like, if I get into a problem and, 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 and shots get fired in the situation or whatever the case may be is, guess what? Yeah, 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 cuz, yeah, cuz. But when you making music and... It's like, you making music that mad other people like. So it's not even like you making music and niggas don't like your shit. Like, you lit. Like, you don't even need the homies at this point. This shit is just lit because you made it lit. And the homies is still hating. Like, damn, cuz, what the fuck is up with y'all niggas? Like, like when I gotta put my gun in y'all niggas' face to make y'all niggas respect this shit, nigga? To make y'all niggas repost this shit, nigga. To make y'all niggas like this shit. You know what I'm saying? Real talk, though. I ain't just talking, nigga. The homies gonna see this, nigga. I'm still gonna be in the hood after this interview, nigga. On Crip. You feel me? So it's like, I ain't, I ain't just in Philly talking right now. You feel me? Real talk. I'm not from I'm from New York. From Brooklyn, from Brownsville. So it's like, the homies will sit down and really, like, watch what I'm doing. And it's like, they only respect my, my movements and my actions when it's violence. And that shit's sad, bro. Cause if y'all gotta, if you come from any environment, it's my message to every nigga in, in every hood. Like, if you come from an environment where one of your men's wind up being a nigga that can take y'all niggas out, meaning y'all all don't gotta be rappers, but y'all all can use y'all man platform to, to, to make whatever y'all think about doing bigger. So it's like, if you sell clothes, if you, if you graphic design, you shoot videos, you wanna be a manager, you sell food, nigga. You a chef, nigga. You, nigga, whatever the fuck you decided to do, nigga. You sell dogs, nigga. I don't give a fuck what you do. Like, you rob niggas. Whatever the fuck you do. You, your man's platform is gonna make that shit bigger. Feel you know what I'm saying? Cause now you get exposure to more people. And now you're traveling and going places that you would've never went if you wouldn't believe in your man. So why would you not believe in your man to be sitting here to where 10, 15 years from now, Y'all niggas gonna be sitting on the block like, damn, cuz, we shoulda, coulda, woulda. Why you think I'm making moves? My day one homies, you know, niggas, listen, I love niggas. Niggas is on the block, cuz. Niggas is on the block. And if I was some pussy nigga from my hood, I wouldn't be able to say certain shit. Niggas be trying to punch me in my face and all that. Try to rob me, try to do all that. That's why I talk so much shit, cuz I done did so much, I can say what the fuck I want, nigga. Nigga, play with me, nigga. We gonna do what we gotta do as men, nigga. And I'm willing to deal with all consequences. That's the difference between me and these rap niggas. I know what comes with picking it up, nigga. <laughs> you feel me? Hello? I know what comes with it. So I talk mad shit, cause I'm not gonna call nobody when nigga play with me, nigga. I'm gonna do what I gotta do myself. I'm not looking for that. I don't wake up with that energy. But guess what? In this world we live in, people only respect violence, nigga. Your own homies, your family, all that. All they respect violence, nigga. 